In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the great atheists of the 19th century said, Christians, they're a joyless people. One of the most respected, if you will, atheists of the 20th, late 20th, and early 21st centuries said of Christians, madness. Today, we celebrate two saints among many. The great martyr, healer, wonder worker, Pantelemon. More on him in a moment. And that's joy. Though he gives his life in a bloody manner for Christ. We celebrate also another saint, Nicholas, a fool for Christ, out of Novgorod, 14th century. That's madness and joyfulness all in one. Why does God raise up such people in our midst? The answer actually is complicated, and I'm going to take two parts of the answer today and share them with you. One is to fulfill the epistle that you just heard, which is about the temple of your body. Temples. Temples are sacred places. They're dedicated. We refer to this church, this cathedral church, as a temple to keep us in touch with the scripture about the temple being the dwelling of the Holy Spirit, to keep us in touch with the fact that Christian churches are continuations of the old temple in Jerusalem, the temple worship at the center of Jerusalem. And also, we're in between the new Jerusalem, where the adoration of the Lamb, as we read in Revelation, the Apocalypse of John, the theologian, the adoration of the Lamb is the fulfillment of all worship, the ultimate temple, the New Jerusalem. That's going on here. But what's one of the earthly facts about temples, such as all buildings? They get dirty. They need cleaning. It's no wonder that St. Paul would tell his original recipients of, his, of the Word of Christ, his interlocutors, if you will, because the people that he is writing to, they know him. They have a personal relationship. These letters are personal to the community. And he says to them, take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is your body. And he lays out in more than one place the things you need to avoid and the things that you need to do. There's another scripture that has to be fulfilled for us, and it's the Old Testament. Psalm 34, verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that tasteth in him, that trusteth in him, rather. Pardon me. That deserves a repeat. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You will notice in the icon, both here and also here in front of us, Pantelemon is often is shown with his pharmacy box open and a spoon or some kind of other implement, doctor's implement. And like anyone of his time, he would have been a student of Aristotle's logic, and he would have come across, no doubt, this line from the great pagan. Doctors are not praised only for their ability to heal, but even more so for their ability to prevent illness. And that takes us back to the cleansing of temples. The temples are healed through cleansing, just as we are spiritually healed through repentance, penance, fasting, prayer. And so it's appropriate so that the scripture can be fulfilled, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, that God would send us he would send us, actually, saints that not only forgive us of our sins, that's from the apostles, comes to us from the twelve, 
but that he would go one step further and raise up a special kind of saint called healers, called healers who do it for free. In ancient times, just like today, doctors charged. If you expected to get treatment, you had to bring money. And it was rare in ancient times that doctors wouldn't actually do it for free. And I mentioned Aristotle. Uh, if Pantaleon had a proper medical training in the fourth century, he had to read Aristotle because Aristotle's the son of a doctor. In fact, Aristotle's father was the court physician to Philip II, the father of Alexander the Great. So you see there, the medical training would have prepared him to go into a career where he would charge for his services. The fact that he's called an unmercenary, that he does it for free, that's Christianity. That's for the fulfillment of, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And then blessed are those that trusteth in him. And so when that box is open and the medicine is distributed, there's another kind of healing that takes place in addition to physical healing. And some of the ancient doctors, though he would blanch in some of their cures today, actually they had success. May I share with you one successful potion that could have been in that box, that pharmacy box? Rose hips. They had figured out if you could make a concoction of honey and roses and some other herbs, probably rosemary, it's very effective against sore throats. And it's an ancient cure. And they had these recipes to make these things, to get some relief on your throat. And those of you who have been suffering with throat ailments, we all know, they're painful. And these astringent properties, they had come to figure out that they have the anesthetic powers in them. A lot of people in the contact of their doctors, let's be honest, sometimes our doctors can be great teachers to us. Sometimes they can restore our humanity. Sometimes we learn a little bit about them. May I share with you a story about the doctor that I have? I chose him because he had two specialties. I thought, well, I want the better doctor here. And he happened to have a slot that was open, so I took it. And when I first met him, I thought, oh, my Lord. He was a grump. Oh, my Lord, he was grumpy. And next time I went, I asked one of his nurses, I said, is he in a good mood today or not? And they said, man, yeah, so so. And so I braced myself to go in there. One time on the third visit or so, I said to him, I said, why are you, I said, I did, I said, why are you so grumpy? What has gotten into you? And you know what he did? He sat down on the chair and he goes, oh, and he just started telling some of the things in his life, some of the difficulties he was having. And then you know what? I did the same thing. Let's, for a few minutes, I, again, I was taking his precious time. I, was being, I began to tell him about some of the things that were troubling me that had nothing to do with the doctor's visit, my throat or my foot or whatever it could have been, God forbid. And after that, my grumpy doctor really became a very trusted person. I, I, I looked forward to going to see him. He was still grumpy, don't, there's no question about that. But I came to respect him. And not only do I believe he was a good physician, in fact, he came, it came time for him to retire, and I regretted that he was going to retire, and then he extended another year, and I was happy for that. Because I continued to go and see him. I learned about his children, and he learned a little bit about my life, too. I'd have to say that not only did he heal me, he also restored me. He helped me to come back to knowledge that I am, in my flesh, the temple of the Holy Spirit. He made me well. To the fulfillment of that psalm, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But what about madness? What about mental illness? Healers take care of that as well. And sometimes God sends in our midst saints that are the absolute contrary of healing. Nicholas, like other fools for Christ, which is one of the most difficult ways to exercise one's Christianity. Is just such a person that everyone takes to be a crazy man. And as you know, in times past, and it's still true in the Middle East to this day, you leave people who, as we say, who are touched. We say they're touched. They've got a, something has happened to them. And you leave them alone. And this is the case in Novgorod with this man, Nicholas. People think that he is worthless because he's out of his mind. By day, he's out of his mind. And by night, you know the story. Fasting, penance, and prayer. And then it's discovered, 
only by accident that in fact he's not out of his mind. He's living this very special vocation, which means no place to live, sleeping on the ground, surviving on handouts. You're literally the icon of poverty and destruction of the temple. And no wonder atheists would say, that's madness, that's total madness. And no wonder someone like Friedrich Nietzsche would say, joyless people, joyless people. I wish I could invite Christopher Hitchens, the 21st century atheist that I mentioned, and Friedrich Nietzsche, the son of a Lutheran pastor, 19th century. I wish I could invite them here this morning. Even under these reduced and difficult circumstances, COVID times, and say, here we are. I hope he would come and say, these are not joyless people. These are, these are people of faith and depth. And Mr. Hitchens, I hope he would come to see us actually as mad, sacred mad, and maybe in that have some room for salvation, perhaps in his life. That's what I would hope for. Ultimately, what is the gift of healing? Why would God raise up healers and madmen? St. Paul tells us why. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you might prove what is good and acceptable and right and perfect. And he says, perfect will of God. It's not enough that God would forgive us, although that is a tremendous gift, and it begins on the cross for us, and it's carried out through the church for 21 centuries. It's not enough for that. In the fulfillment of God's mercy for us, he would actually prescribe a way for us to see before us healers. It's not enough that we would see the apostles. God will continue a kind of apostolate, a kind of apostolic work in the rare, difficult life of the holy fool. Also the life of the stylite, which we have them here to remind us of this difficult witness. And finally, God fulfills, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, actually even in icons. We are blessed, privileged to have a very special icon of St. Pantaleon here with us, with a relic. This icon, not so long ago, was in a disastrous condition. It was a mess. It has been, I have it on authority, from our proto-deacon, Leonid, that it actually has been, if you will, getting well. It's actually starting to restore itself. Icons do do this. There is some physics behind this, if I may. It has, I believe it has to do with the treatment that is placed on them, which is a type of resin. And as you know, with classic violins, this is the thing with Stradivarius and Guinari and the million dollar violins, that treatment that is put on them is actually part of the secret which makes them to be great. It's a living property, it moves and it changes and it reacts with, it, with things around it. We would say in the church, all properties and physical things aside, the icon is actually self-restoring. And it's appropriate that the icon is of a healer. And that the icon of the healer would demonstrate for us the property of self-restoration, healing. Because Lord knows we need it. I would like to end on this. We need healing. In COVID times, let's be honest what our difficulties are. Domestic squabbles and violence off the charts. A couple of businesses are doing very well right now, off the charts. Alcohol, drugs, they're making money. Other businesses, if it's online, if it's a business that operates online and you pay for it, they're making money. And some of those businesses, I can't, I can't mention them here from the Amazon, it's disgraceful to say it, they're making a lot of money. I read about it in the news. What else is happening in COVID times? People, lack of fitness. Some people are struggling with fitness. Oh, that's me. Eating too much. Oh, that's also me. I know I'm not alone. And the list goes on and on and on. Our temples, they need cleaning out. And so it's appropriate for today that we would spend a couple of moments looking at madness on one hand, 
because living as we are today with masks on in church, we look like, we look like bandits in church, <laughs> coming to church, come to church and then leave immediately after communion as if you've stolen communion and put your mask back on and run out and run away with the sacred treasure of all time. These are crazy times. This is madness that we're living in. And we need healing. So that the words of the psalmists can be fulfilled. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs>